in 2020, what we see is that just the f freedom falls off of a cliff. So you see this steady de decline in personal and economic freedoms. Economic freedoms were fairly pronounced. And then you see this huge drop uh, in virtually every category of, of freedom that, that you can think of in the year 2000, setting back to 2020, setting back uh, the world wow. more than 20 years. Um, Ian is one of the co-authors of the Human Freedom Index, which but actually before we get into that, maybe you could just explain to our audience what exactly that is. Sure. The, the Human Freedom Index is a global measurement of economic, personal, and civil freedoms around the world. And so what we do is we take uh, 83 distinct uh, measurements of freedom in areas ranging from the rule of law or safety and security or the size of government or freedom of speech, freedom of association, 12 big categories, but 83 uh, distinct indicators for 165 countries. And then we put the, that data together to come up with what we think is a reasonable picture of freedom, human freedom within countries and at a global level. And when we say freedom, uh, we have an idea of what we mean by that. Everybody has their own definition of freedom. George Bush did, uh, Hugo Chavez did, Al Qaeda did, everybody yeah. does. We, we, By freedom, we mean the absence of coercive constraint, the idea that you can lead your life as you choose, as long as you respect the equal rights of others. And that's what we're measuring. And, uh, and so it's really the first uh, serious systematic uh, measurement of broad human freedoms uh, for a big set of countries. Uh, and the data that we're using spans two decades now. So it's very useful to, to look at trends and freedom as well. Can you just very quickly say, like going back 20 years that, uh, to, uh, until 2020, and we're, you know, we'll talk a lot about 2020 because that's like, you know, a big year, but uh, what, you know, is the arc of freedom bending towards uh, light or dark, uh, you know, up until 2020? What, what was the general trajectory? So what we see is with uh, beginning in the year 2000, which is the, the year for which we have complete data, yeah. is uh, human freedom being uh, high, relatively high, certainly compared to decades past by what we know, uh, right. and continuing on an upward trajectory up until uh, the year 2007, which is really the, the global high point of, of human freedom. That coincides mm -hmm. with uh, the financial the global financial crisis, which came the next year. And we see a steady decline of human freedom uh, up through 2019. From 2007 to 2019, you already had virtually 80% of the world's population seeing some decline in freedom. And then mm -hmm. from nine, 2019 to 2020, 94% of the world's population saw this dramatic decline. That one of the things that we noticed is that some of the countries that were already low, like very low, like Venezuela and so on, they were already pretty much rock bottom and um, they didn't, there's not much more for them to, to fall. Yeah. So the drops really were coming from uh, a lot of countries that were relatively free. I mean, countries all around the world saw drops, but we saw big drops in countries that uh, are used to a higher level of freedom. And th mm -hmm. typically what we see from one year to the next to the next is small movements in freedom in one direction or another. This is a very large movement for the entire world. Could you dig a little bit into what were some of the policies worldwide yeah. that caused this hit? Um, I've got, I pulled a page from your report here that shows some of these different categories. I mean, we see the, the largest declines are in movement, as you uh, alluded to earlier, expression and um, trade and even and religion is also on there. Were there, did you break down, you know, specific policies that caused this uh, or was, uh, you know, how much of it, I guess, the quite one question is how much of it was policy and how much of it was just kind of pure reaction to the pandemic since we're talking about the pandemic year here yeah that's a good question because um you might ask well but some of this had to take place as a response to the pandemic even if it wasn't policy people aren't going to be moving around and and so on but what we're measuring there are re restrictions and uh for the most part <clears throat> that's what we're that's what we're 
for the most part, uh, mm -hmm. measuring. And the, and the chart that you just showed shows the 20 year uh, movement uh, yeah. of these indicators. And, um, and so freedom of movement, I think that was the one that, that saw the biggest decline uh, over that period, but almost all of that decline occurred in the year 2020. And right. for obvious reasons, I mean, you remember we, we travel internationally came to a halt. Travel locally <laughs> in many places came to a halt. Certainly in a lot of countries, you couldn't even leave your house. Uh, you could you yeah. get in serious trouble. So that was a big, uh, a big hit. Freedom of expression did too. I mean, um, what you could say about the pandemic or uh, criticizing the government in many countries, rich countries and poor countries, democracies and non-democracies, um, was was restricted and what what uh, um, what media companies uh, and even big tech companies uh, could say came under scrutiny and under pressure um, in a way that was probably already happening, but uh, even more so because of heightened uh, tensions and health concerns and so on. Um, freedom of association. We know that people were not allowed to gather. Uh, this was a big, uh, a big issue. And uh, the rule of law came, came under, uh, uh, under pressure. And we see big falls in that. Uh, because a lot of these things were uh, um, uh, adapted or uh, uh, implemented in an arbitrary way, uh, favoring some uh, groups and disfavoring others in of course, in the less free countries, in the authoritarian countries, this was done in a, in a very random way to go after uh, dissidents or political opponents and so on. Whereas in more advanced countries, um, there, there may be other reasons for that, political reasons, and maybe it, be, it was more subtle, but it still was happening. And that was denounced by human rights groups, um, including Human Rights Watch and so on. This was not just a problem for a part of the world. This is a pro this is a problem that, that um, rich and poor countries, democracies and non democracies, uh, were facing to different differing degrees. And you talked about how I mean the the real drop off came in more free countries. If you're in Venezuela, you're already pretty heavily restricted on a day to day thing. But I was thinking when you were talking about like freedom of assembly or whatnot. I remember reasoning running stories, I think it was in Mississippi, of a church that was going to have a drive-in, you know, religious ceremony where people stayed in their cars and parked in a lot, you know, and, and you know, kind of, you know, didn't get out of their car. In a way, it was, you know, probably the best way to set up church in the future, right? You know, where it's like you don't even have to get out of your car. But they right. were banned. they were banned from doing that. And that's like, in the U.S., that's really fucked up in a way that in a country that is used to repression, it's like, OK, well, that's just Sunday or Saturday or whatever day we celebrate church on. We're constrained. Um, I think that's right. And that that was, you know, that kind of thing was the, probably uh, among the most shocking for, for Americans or for people who were used to uh, a good a high degree of freedom. We really haven't seen that kind of curtailment of freedom to that degree across such a wide uh, number of freedoms in the United States. And in, in yeah, you have to go back to like World War II, really. I mean, probably but, where there was rationing as well as uh, curfews and you know restrictions on, on industrial inputs and things like that. Things were actually being diverted away from you know commercial activities into a war effort and whatnot. Well, that's right. And not, you know, not even during the financial crisis did we see a drop in freedom that was this as, as severe as this. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't want to give the impression that the that the less free, more authoritarian countries didn't see a big drop in freedom. They did. In fact, mm -hmm. um, we have a, a chart in the book that that looks at which are the countries that most dropped in terms of freedom from the high point in 2007 through 2020 and the top 10 are all countries that were led by authoritarian regimes but what i want to emphasize there is that that was an ongoing trend mm. and so what the pandemic did was was accelerate it whereas in liberal democracies and freer countries the trend was a slower trend and then there was a big drop off in one year so um, that's probably the, the the difference in looking at uh, one year to the next versus uh, uh, what was going on. And I, I, I mean, it, it's 
it's probably true to say that the pandemic accelerated uh, a number of trends that were already mm. happening in the world, including in, in rich countries. I think that the um, the freedom of speech issue, which was already coming under pressure in uh, liberal democracies, mm -hmm. um, came under more pressure. And, uh, you know, free speech advocates talk about a free speech recession that had already been going on in in the world and in develop in developed countries and um the pandemic accelerated that in, in rich countries as well that was an excerpt from our conversation with ian vasquez of the cato institute about the state of global freedom in the wake of covid19 if you want to not watch another excerpt go here if you want to watch the full show go here and tune in every thursday at 1 p.m eastern time at Reason TV's YouTube channel, and we'll have another live stream with an interesting thinker, writer, activist, policymaker, or someone else who's influencing American and world culture.